Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to a StarCraft II commentary. My name is Promise, and today I have the privilege of casting a PvZ matchup between two very good players. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and introduce who we have playing in this match. We have spawning in the upper right side as our purple Zerg player from the team Comrante Esports Club. We have Vortex. Spawning in the lower left side of the map Cloud Kingdom as our blue Protoss player from Mouse Sports, we have Mana. Now, PvZ has been a very interesting matchup. A lot of Protoss players uh, have been scared. A lot of Protoss players don't really enjoy this matchup as much as they did in the past. Reason being is because Zerg players have become very good at defending two base all ins and then transitioning very quickly into the Infestors, the Corruptors, and the root, uh, and the Broodlords. Now that's a very hard composition to deal with as a Protoss player. Even in the late game, when you have your economy established, when you're sitting on something like three, four, or five base, you have your mothership out. The thing that's very frustrating is getting the Vortex off and then being able to remax and deal with the Zerg army. And that is something that not a lot of Protoss players like. They don't like relying on one unit that changes the whole dynamic of the matchup. So we'll definitely have to see if Mana feels safe going into the later stages of the game in the PvZ game, in the, in the PvZ matchup. Or is he going to be a player that goes for some kind of two base all in or a three base timing? We'll definitely look for that. But Vortex, on the other hand, a player that is not so known in the StarCraft 2 community, he did go to. Uh, I believe IEM and had a very good showing there, doing very well in his bracket and took a very nice place in that tournament. So Vortex against Mana, definitely going to be a very uh, a very close match in my opinion. So we'll definitely see uh, the styles that each player has to offer in this match. So, so far, Mana just being a little bit of annoyance, uh, moving into that natural expansion of Vortex. Just trying to deny the expansion, this is what a lot of Protoss players do. Uh, you know, if Vortex was going for something like a 15 hatch, and Mana was going for a Forge first, I would I would bet money that Mana is probably going to do a little bit of cannon rushing to uh, that natural expansion, possibly even try to den deny that third expansion for some time. But Mana having a mutual respect right now for Vortex, back home we are seeing that it is going to be a Nexus first for Mana. So Mana going greedy himself, not going Forge first, going directly into that Nexus to try to go ahead and have an economic footing with the Zerg economy. Gateway coming down, Forge being placed, most likely going to see a cannon here coming in position for Mana. There it is, so cannon coming down. And uh, Vortex, meanwhile, going for that spawning pool first, as I mentioned. Hatchery is going to complete here very soon, about 80% completed. In the main base of Vortex, no gases has been taken yet. So we're not seeing, or, or we're not going to be seeing, any kind of Roachling all-in. We're not seeing any kind of Baneling bust, nothing like that. I can probably guarantee you guys that he's going to be going for uh, a gasless three base hatchery, get your economy established, make some drones, and then eventually transition into some sort of tech, be it infestors, be it roaches, be it mutalisks, whatever style you decide to do. Now Cloud Kingdom is a map that uh, is pretty good for Protoss. A lot of Zerg players don't mind playing the matchup, but they don't really like playing Protoss on this map. Reason being is this third expansion is very easy to take. All you really have to worry about is getting your Nexus gown, getting the sufficient amount of units, getting a really good SimCity between uh, building the right positioning with the gateways, getting your cannons in a really nice area so that you can defend any kind of counterattacks. And as Zerg players have figured out the motto, I guess, for, for PvZ, it's definitely just to deny that third expansion as long as a zerg player can can contain map control can scout around see when the third expansion comes out they have a bunch of options some players can go into very heavy three base aggression with roach ling some players decide to go into a fourth expansion tech to infestors and then straight into that hive tech so we'll definitely see what vortex is going to go ahead and decide to do so far mana if we look at the tech we are seeing that uh you know he's just going up to two gases in the main base very standard very common now Natural expansion is completed. No kinds of gas is taken in the natural, so that's definitely something we want to look for. Uh, if Mana decides to just stay on these two gases, I would assume he's going to be going for some kind of early two base aggression. Maybe a four gate, maybe a five gate, uh, maybe just a very quick third expansion. So we'll definitely be looking for that. Mana trying to just scout around here with the probe. Uh, he does have an idea that the third expansion exists from Vortex. He did get some scouting information, which is very important. So many players just assume that the Zerg is going to be on three bases, but Mana, very map aware and has very good scouting information. 
At this point, Vortex is just continuing his harvester production. We can see now the Roach Warren is coming down in position. His, he has a few options. He can either go directly into Roach Warren, get the Evolution Chamber for plus one, or even go ahead and just uh, play a little bit more greedy and not even get that, which can leave him a little bit susceptible to Dark Templar play. But Mana moving into that third expansion with the Zealot, with a Stalker, trying to get a little bit of harvester kills right now is going to be Mana. Focusing down some drones. Queen is going to be a little bit... Uh, not really uh, kind of just on its own, to be quite honest. And it actually might go down. Mana focusing down with the Zealot and the Stalker. Queen falling down to 7 health. That would be a huge pickoff for Mana. Queen goes down. Really nice play there for Mana. And this is going to force Vortex to make another Queen. He obviously was able to produce some links to deal with this pressure. And something I want to note about what Vortex is doing. If you look at the production tab, Vortex is not committing with 50 lings or anything crazy like that. He made the right amount of lings, immediately going back into the harvester production, getting his metabolic boost, continuing to make queens, and that that's just a very a very solid sign that he's a consistent and an intelligent player. So many times you see Zerk players just overcommit in units to be able to deal with this early pressure, but Vortex definitely has his build time down, definitely knows exactly what could be coming here from Mana. In the base of Mana, the Protoss player, we are seeing three gateways being added in the main base. Robotics facility is going to be the tech of choice for Mana. I believe he did go for an Observer, yes. So the Observer is already going to be out for Mana, and this is important, and this is just a very safe build. Robotics facility, in general, in PvZ, is kind of the safest things you can do. It allows you to expand off of Immortals. It allows you to go ahead and put a little bit of pressure if you want to, you know, accompany it with a, with a Warp Prism or something like that. But Mana moving in here to the main expansion of, of Vortex, just wants to get some scouting information. If he sees a Spire going to go into Blink, if he sees anything like Roaches or Infestors, he can easily go ahead and decide to take a third expansion. But hold that thought, it looks like Vortex trying to swing into that third expansion with a good amount of Lings. Mana already going to be able to deny that. Force Field coming down for Mana, so we're not going to have any kind of run by. Mana is not going to have any of that. And there's a third expansion coming down for Mana. But Vortex still being very aggressive, trying to move towards that natural expansion. Mana will be able to warp in some Zealots, but I'm going to give props to Vortex. Props is given where it's done, and this is exactly what Vortex is doing. He is trying to be very aggressive, trying to run some links into the main base, trying to just see the army composition of Mana. He sees Immortals, he sees sentries, so he can assume that he is, you know, Mana is going to be a little bit defensive, and that's in fact what he's doing. Mana right now sitting on 99 supply, Vortex sitting on 110 supply, again, trying to move in towards that third Third expansion with a lot of links. Third expansion is about to finish. Force field's going down for Mana. Not the best force fields. Vortex is going to go ahead and get the heck out of there. Does not want to be able to deal with this army. And Mana has done what he needed to do. He needed to keep that third expansion alive. So Mana can kind of tech behind this. He can go into Colossus. He can continue to get these sentries to continue to get the immortals maybe even go for uh, a very strong three base timing around the 13 or the 14 minute mark we'll definitely take a look for that and the production tab in fact we are going to see a twilight council being started for mana so he's going to go ahead and transition into blink very beautiful very standard and very clean play coming out from the protoss player vortex meanwhile this is kind of exactly what i'm talking about taking straight to high but vortex finds himself in an awkward position with a lot of roaches and links in the center of the map mana trying to control the units very nicely done by vortex focusing down the sentries but mana seems to have too many units units tap for mana Three Immortals, eight Stalkers, and eight Sentries. Vortex is obviously going to have the Harvester advantage at this stage. 73 drones compared to the 65 probes. Mana is, is kind of going to go for a little bit of a push. And I, I don't know. Mana can actually do quite a bit of damage here to the economy of Vortex. Vortex trying to desperately get some spines up. They are immediately going to get canceled. Mana going to go to work on this fourth expansion. Hatchery goes down. Production tab for Vortex. Desperately trying to get some, uh, some units on the map as quickly as possible. Infestation Pit's going to finish. So we can go ahead and get seven Infestors, continuing his Roaches. As I mentioned before, that Hive is about to finish. And this is where Protoss players start to struggle. They tell themselves, okay, I am actually, I'm on the map. I am being aggressive. I am denying, denying expansions. But for some reason, the Zerg is still going straight to Hive. And this is where it becomes very difficult. If Mana wants to be able to do anything against what Vortex is doing, he is desperately going to need to get the Mothership, uh, or first at least transition into the Stargate, into the Fleet Gate, uh, Fleet Beacon, and then directly into the Mothership. And the production tab exactly shows that. He is teching to robotic space. So we are in fact going to be seeing Colossi, Stargate being started, Blink is getting started as well. Upgrades wise, we are seeing plus one weapons as well as plus one armor already completed for Mana. Vortex right now sitting on plus one Carapace. So... 
A little bit of an upgrade advantage right now for Mana. And Vortex getting a Spire behind this. He looks like he wants to gear up for another attack. Moving towards that third expansion. Really great force field planks down, but some links are going to come up the ramp. Sentry is being focused on by the links. Infestor's throwing Infested Terrans up on that ramp, and Mana is in a very weird position. Infested Terrans going to be able to do so much damage, but really nice place force field. It's not going to allow any additional reinforcements of the Infestors, of the Roaches, or the links to be able to come in. Infested Terrans, again, continuing to be thrown into that third expansion. Mana desperately needs to hold off this expansion. It is getting focused down by the infested terrans mana almost gonna finish blink plus two weapons is gonna finish as well this is just such a tense situation for mana and infested terrans continuing to focus down that third nexus nexus goes down but beautiful defense by mana the upgrades kicked in just in the nick of time vortex did not have a superior upgrade advantage to mana whatsoever and this is quite frankly why mana was able to defend this so mana gonna go ahead and take that third expansion again Creep spread continuing to be very proactive right now for Vortex towards that right center of the map. Of course, he doesn't really want to uh, engage towards the left side because that fourth expansion probably going to come down for Mana very soon. There we go. So Mana telling himself, you know what? You're going to kill my Nexus. I'm going to go ahead and double expand. And I don't blame him. His economy is looking pretty good. His army is okay a lot of stalkers good amount of immortals as well as the colossus but he desperately needs the mothership because production tab for the zerg infester is still being produced gonna go ahead and transition into corruptors greater spire is on its way it's about 90 percent completed and vortex once he has a good amount of broodlords on the map it's going to be very difficult for mana to be able to deal with the army without any kind of mothership we're going to see some roaches here swing towards that third expansion. Going to try to do a little bit of damage. Focusing a pylon, not a big deal. Not going to change anything in the outcome of this game whatsoever. But Vortex nearing maxing right now. 192 supply for the Zerg. 147 supply for Mana. Mana continuing to get his upgrades, which are very important and very crucial in this matchup. Fourth expansion is going to finish here very soon. Uh, the roach is still alive actually here towards the bottom side. Going to be able to focus down the pylon. Not too much though. And there's the production tab for the Protoss. The mothership is on its way. And this is going to be very crucial for Mana as well as for Vortex. Mana needs to get the mothership out. And Mana needs to get enough time to get the energy out for the mothership. If Vortex hits a timing before the mothership gets to Vortex. I guess I just said Vortex twice there. But anyway, Vortex is going to have a good advantage. Mothership without Vortex, not really going to do too much. You can just fungal, you can neural, you can kill it with Corruptors, and Vortex, in fact, just getting more units right now. Maybe might even be gearing for an attack. He is maxed. Mana sitting on 172 supply. Mana trying to clear up some creep here. Going to go ahead and blink away. Does not want to get fungled by these Infestors. And the units tab for Vortex, 7 Broodlords. We see 35 Roaches, 7 Infestors. He's continuing to get his upgrades. Going to finish on his plus 2 Carapace. This is a scary army. The fact that the Corruptors uh, are not there is not going to be helpful because he's not really going to be able to focus down the Mothership. And the Mothership should be on the map. Or should be on the map. Okay, the Mothership is out for Mana. But at the same time, Vortex going to go ahead and press forward here towards that 4th expansion. I'm not too sure that Mana can, can really attack into this army of Vortex. Vortex has a lot of Infestors. He can easily get the Fungals off on these can uh, on the uh, on the Stalkers. And Mana doing the smart choice. He knows he can't attack into it. Going to go ahead and sack that 4th base. Play a little bit safer. Defend that 3rd base. And if he can go ahead and buy himself enough time for that Mothership. 75 energy on the Mothership for that Vortex. But Vortex is not going to let that happen. He is continuing to move into that third expansion. Broodlord's in position. Focusing down the Nexus. Vortex continuing to make some units in production. Roach is going to move forward right now. Fo uh, force Field's coming down from uh, from Mana. Infested Terran's being thrown out of the Infestors. And really good position for Mana. Still has a supply advantage. But Fungal on the Mothership. Roach is doing so much damage. Infested Terran's able to focus everything down. The Mothership is not going to get the energy that's gonna go down oh my god that was such a tense situation for mana finding himself down to 137 supply mana can can warp in some units but 72 lings are about to stream across the map into that uh into that third expansion of mana vortex is just so aggressive in this pvb uh pvz matchup production tab we can still see the mothership is in production for mana vortex 
can max whenever he wants. Vortex is on five bases. The Lings are going to go ahead and come in right now into that third expansion. Mana trying to get some units on the map. All he really has is 14 Stalkers. Lings are going to be the reinforcement right now from Vortex and be able to surround all these uh, all these Stalkers. Now, Mana does have Blink, but can't really do anything against this with, again, a nice surround by Vortex. Mana falling down to 93 supply. Third expansion is gone. Economy is gone for Mana. Upgrade advantage now going to be in the favor of Vortex as he marches his way into that natural expansion of Mana. The Mothership is still coming out, but the Mothership not going to really do anything when you don't have anything to help it out. It's just kind of how it works. If you want to be able to use the Mothership to its full ability, you need Archons, you need Stalkers, you need a bigger size army. And Mana, quite frankly, can't really afford to do it. He has good upgrades. His money is okay. He's going to go ahead and retake that third expansion. But the problem here is Vortex, his economy is already very, very healthy. His economy, let's, let's look at the unit stab. 60 drones. That's not a lot of drones, but the fact that he has these spines in position is really going to scare away Mana from any kind of counterattack. Vortex continuing to get Corruptors to go ahead and transfer, uh, trans transition into Broodlords and transform them into Broodlords, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Vortex, 168 supply compared to the 104 supply of Mana. Mana scouting right now with the, the Observer, seeing the army, telling himself, that is a lot of stuff. I don't know if I can kill it, but he's doing what he kind of has to do. Mana is getting some Templars on the map. We'll be able to make some Archons. Mothership is going to come out. It just came out, in fact, for Mana. 60 energy right now for the Mothership. So he needs to buy himself, again, more time to get the Vortex. And the fact that Mana is on 5 base, or, or Vortex is on 5 base, and Mana is still only really mining off 2 base. Well, he's only mining off 1 base. This natural expansion is about to run out very soon. But he's going to double expand again. I don't think Vortex is going to let that happen. He is going to go ahead and go on the aggressive once again. Vortex is going to max out. Mana very far away from maxing out. Archons continuing to be produced for Mana. I don't think he's going to have enough economy to really do anything. Not a lot of gas to even get some Templars on the map. And Vortex units tab again for the Zerg players. Seven Broodlords. 18 Roaches, 11 Infestors, continuing to morph in additional Broodlords. We are going to see two more morphing right now from Vortex. Vortex sitting on 200 supply. Mana, again, pinned back behind that third expansion, does not know where to go. Vortex even taking a sixth expansion towards the bottom right side. And we are going to see Vortex go ahead and be even more aggressive. Going to pin down that fourth expansion of Mana. Mana cannot defend this expansion, obviously, because his army composition is, is lo a lot less superior compared to what Vortex has, but here we go. Vortex wants to kill this Protoss army. He is gearing up for one final push as we see him marching again into that third expansion of Mana. Mana gonna go ahead and get some feedbacks on the uh, on the Overseers. Vor uh, Vortex goes down, all of the units go in that Vortex. Really nicely done by Mana, but the problem here is he does not have any units. Roach is continuing to focus down Stalkers, Colossus, and Archon is going to go, uh, I think one Archon went in that Vortex. Not really going to do too much. Ruthlord's coming out. Mana finds himself down in so much supply. And Vortex forces Mana to go ahead and throw in the towel with the GG. And that was such a really well-played game from Vortex. And with that, it's going to conclude our cast. I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you next time.